So that's most cars around here. I've got this. This is a 1965 Cooper S. This is the original hot patch, original hot mini. And we are driving through Carmel Valley, actually at the top of it, as you can see, heading to the quail. Just came from Laguna Seca. A uh, couple things about this car, 1965 Cooper S, as I mentioned. Um, this is the car that, you know, started the hot mini in a lot of respects. Um, well, I shouldn't say that, it sort of perfected it, if you will. This is a car that feels more, actually more interesting, faster, um, more fun than the 99 and 2000 cars that I drove just yesterday. It's a car that is also just incredible in terms of its design, interior. How vulgar is that? Um, it's, a, it's a car that has just an incredible amount of ingenuity really revolving around maximum use of space. So you know it, you've heard it, but man, they did an incredible job in the original Mini uh, compared to what we have today. So let's talk about the car for a second. I mean, driving up this, this mountain road was not its, its uh, happy place, I'll say that. This is a car that is not intended to be uh, pushed hard going up. And, and I definitely, definitely smelled a little whiff of smoke. The engine was getting hot, so I pulled over. Um, wasn't its happiest, but in the corners it was just unmatched. And and really, when when it comes down to it, I mean, it's an absolute joy at any speed in any situation. Um, the pedal box is cramped. Uh, the windows don't roll down, as you can see. It's hot, but oh my god, it's just it's just unlike anything you'll ever drive. I, I cannot recommend popping into one if you can enough. It is truly amazing and it makes you realize just how special the mini brand is and and you know there's a little bit of lineage to the current car there's no question there's some feel there's some similarities that they've tried to build into the car that you definitely see here um, but here it's turned up to 11 or maybe 37. let's take you around the cockpit a little bit um the crazy thing about this car is that it is so simple i mean look at this deep dish con concave sort of dash layout. Um, very symmetrical layout, of course. Minis tried to, to bring that back, but the ingenuity here, I mean, clearly there's no crash structure whatsoever. Um, you see the lock mechanism, the door mechanism. There's even more back there. Uh, there's such a ingenuity in this car and, and beauty in its simplicity. It's, it's really a shame that we can't make cars like this again. Um, granted, I, I do not want to get in an accident with this, but it's, uh, it is something to behold for sure. It's loud. It's, it's tight. I've got big feet that don't necessarily fit the pedal boxes so well, but I'm having the time of my life. This is incredible. I'm, I am, um, in love with this car. And the interesting thing is I've driven a couple of 99 to 2000. This is the most fun. The 65 Cooper S is really the most fun I've had in a mini, uh, classic mini ever. And uh, I mean, currently I'm not, but uh, just driving through, just driving through town, driving through some of the back roads, it is it is immeasurably fun. Uh, it, it is. I've never been in a car more eager and and willing. Uh, it's not fast, but it's quick enough. It doesn't break well. Uh, when it does, it veers to the left. Uh, there's things that you need to be careful uh, about it. Things are vague in the in the gearbox. Uh, yeah, it, but it's great. I mean, this is amazing. And and you know, when, when people talk about the Cooper S specifically, the classic Cooper S, and, and and talk about it with reverence, I always assume that they surpassed it later later in the uh, model run. And I'm sure there's some variations that have, but my God, uh, this is just incredible. And and even the design of this car. I mean, they, they evolved it quite a lot towards towards the later part, but this is really, I mean, you look at those door bends, look at the way this this is, the the dash is sort of dished in there. Like it's, it's just so brilliant. Every little square centimeter is thoughtful and, and really crafted to give you the most interior volume with the smallest space. I mean, I know it's part of the mini brand and we all know it, but driving in and, and really where it started, it, it, it makes you realize how fundamentally different this car was. It still is. It's incredible. And it's immeasurably fun. 
So we're here at the quail. This is, of course, the uh, the infamous parking lot at the quail. And there's a lot to see. Uh, this is the auxiliary a lot, actually. It's not even the lot. And just walking through here, I mean, we've got a Bentley. We've got a Senna. We've got a just a nice little 720. And, of course, a LaFerrari tucked in here. This, ladies and gentlemen, is quail. This is also quail. The entrance, quick champagne, and then of course, the cars, the culture, the society. Let's follow this F1. Learn F1, LM. Okay, let's take a close look at this thing. Best in show. Be the, the pinnacle of the F1 right here. Quail is winding down. I'm exhausted. I'm back from the Quail in the 1965 Mini Cooper S. Uh, those windows are open all the way. As you can imagine, there's no air in here, and we're in uh, stop and go traffic. So things things have been uh, cooler in the world at times, but um, still incredible day. Just the insanity of quail is something that you have to experience at least once in your life. This is a uh, an interesting way to to do it, obviously, in, in the mini. I mean, this is a car that is uh, <laughs> pretty crazy. Um, but, you know, given the fact that things there are even crazier, it sort of stands out a different way. Um, so, anyway, fantastic, fantastic day. And uh, now, just some twisties.